Hey Quilty Crew, we've got a special live stream today. We're at H&H &H America's in Chicago. I know we got a little bit of different intro and all that, but we're live, so you know, you get used to it. Today, uh, well for the first stream anyway, we've got TJ Wright of TJ Wright Quilts. Say hi TJ. Hi. <laughs> we're going to be talking about her art quilting, how she gets inspired, what got her started, all that sorts of things. So not to like waste any time let's get right into it so tj how long have you been like art quilting and just quilting in general i started quilting about 20 years ago and then naturally progressed into art quilting yeah quilt pattern design quilt pattern writing right and then um now i created these mini art quilts that i'm calling threadscapes i and love I'm that so excited i'm going to be presenting in a demo lab here today. It's so exciting. I know. So, yeah. <laughs> what most people probably don't realize is that TJ actually was my mentor and a group mentor for uh, this pattern design class that we all took together. And we've kind of just really become close friends and we talk all the time. We love hanging out on Discord mm -hmm. and seeing what each other are doing. It's mm -hmm. really a nice uplifting community which is kind of hard to find when you have a lot of women in a very competitive space right totally. how do you how do you feel it because you started with you're a professional hair salon and you have your own business and you've been a small business owner for quite a while how has that transition been from small business owner of a hair salon to writing your own designs and publishing and being a small business owner in the quilting scape well, I come with a whole host of skills already as a small business owner. Right. But I think the challenges have been uh, with social media um, and putting yourself out there. Normally, people come to see me right. in a salon environment for my skills there, but now I have to project my quilt skills out into the quilt world. And so that's a little bit different um, situation. I find being involved in our group that it uh, is so inspiring, so encouraging. Um, I can't imagine trying to do it without a community around me. Right. I love that they're supporting me, but I also love to uplift other people. And I have to tell you, oh, I no. have to tell you guys, oh, no. So here's the thing, Sandrasa and I have this deal. I'm always telling her oh, no. how amazing she is. <laughs> when I first saw her first pattern, I was blown away, blown away. And so I would tell her how amazing she was. Oh, and, Lord. and you know how when someone's giving you that positive <laughs> feedback, it's really hard to accept it. Oh, man. And so every time it got to the point i would say amazing too many times to her so it's kind of like a cuss word now i have to put a quarter in a jar so i brought all of my quarters oh my god so there's at least a couple <laughs> cups of coffee there for you i'm going to starbucks later i tell yeah, you what man. it's right over there i saw one man i that that is one thing that I think is probably the hardest thing about being a small business owner and a creative in general is you always have that that imposter syndrome and you kind of feel that uh, self-deprecating and like you don't you don't feel like it's okay to say hey I'm great I'm awesome right and that's it's so nice to hear and have people around you that yeah you go in the same business and you know we're kind of competitors but in the same like I fully believe a uh, rising tide raises all ships. Absolutely. Right? And that's... Absolutely. But you are very special as far as like an art quilter. And not just because you're my friend and you're awesome. No. <laughs> but unlike a lot of quilters, you're a quilt artist too. Like you've actually been in art gallery shows and like two or three of them now, right? right. That's, yeah. that's something that's very impressive. Tell me how that has like shifted for you from being a quilter to being a quilt artist and like presenting yourself with your art out into the world like what kind of challenges is that for you not only is like a quilter going and presenting art quilts but like the art industry isn't always that like welcoming to people they think that are crafters and like there's there's a 
a big like I could get on a tangent, guys, and yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna start that now. But like, what is your experience, and how do you feel about all that? Um, I just say persevere, move on, and keep going. Right. It's not you need to do what you love to do. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly when I'm creating art quilts, I'm creating for myself. Right. But then there comes a thing of well you kind of create for yourself but then you also have to think who is your person that you are creating for right. and you need to align yourself with those people mm -hmm. so my current show i am um, actually working quite a bit smaller and that was the whole purpose of creating threadscapes right is these smaller working pieces that are a little bit more accessible for people who don't have large walls who maybe don't want a very bold uh, piece of work on their wall. Right. Um, my progression has been that there's only so many bed quilts I can make. Right, exactly. And I love to sew. I love piecing. I love creating. So it kind of, after a while, narrows it down that, well, you got to move on to something else mm -hmm. and you need to work smaller, create gifts for friends and family because right. they don't always want a bed quilt either. No. That's, that's very true. And you actually, you brought an example of your work. I did. Um, if you want to show everybody. Yeah. See, now what I love is not only is it a quilt, but like you shadow boxed it and you do something just not just thread but you have like found objects and such correct exactly like, what exactly. inspires you like with these specific like are you looking specifically for seashells and things like that or is it like what inspires you to find what you find well um i think that this concept is inspiring in a lot of ways it could um marry itself i i want to create i want people to be able to create these for themselves right. and um, you could memorialize events in your lives or people or a wedding or graduation that's a good idea yeah. um, found objects we all have those found objects that are in a drawer somewhere and we open up the drawer and the memory comes to us how we acquired it but what if we were able to create that into a piece that we could live with and that those memories are with us all the time, Something that they're not just tucked with. away yeah. and, and forgotten, mm -hmm. that they're there all the time. And and to be able to do that for your friends and family, gifts, you know, there's so many things. There's gotta be some level of uh, nostalgia there, because like, for me, when I was a kid, I collected stones. Like, what kid doesn't mm -hmm. love a good stone or a good stick? Mm -hmm. My kids now, they bring home lots yeah. of sticks. But, like, when you're a kid, they all feel so special. And now as adults, you know, we're not exactly encouraged to find just random objects or, you know, but we still we still covet those things. And, you know, it's it's nice. I, I love the idea of being able to put that together <clears throat> into, like, a memory box. Mm -hmm. or It's like a quilt scrapbook in a way, right? That would be a really great um, analogy of it, for sure. Yeah. I, um... One of, the, I, one of the pieces that I want to do in the future is um, I want to feature my dad's signature on a card. Aww. You know, he's no longer with us, but right. I remember how he would write, Love, Dad. And I just think that would be so special yeah. to just have that little bit of him um, memorialized in an art quilt hanging in our home. That's so beautiful. Just as a memory. Yeah. And that you... You get that love dad every day, right. not just that day that you open it up in a box well, and, and look at a memory. It opens up conversation too with your family members mm -hmm. or your children or friends that ask you, hey, what is that? What do you? Mm -hmm. And then you can share in that memory and that memory still lives on. Right. I think that's a very beautiful idea. Yeah. So, yeah, and you're sure. actually presenting this particular quilt and this style here at H&H, &H, right? I am. I'm going to be teaching a class in, a, in about an hour and a half, actually. Yeah, yeah, so if you're here at H&H, &H, you make sure to go down. Where exactly can people find you? It's at the Learning Lab that's um, sponsored by Road to California. Nice. Now, seats are limited, so I don't know what the availability is. They're limiting it to 25 people. Right. And I have um, kits available, a little makeup take kits available for um, the people that are going to be participating. Wow, and 
are you because you're also not only an art quilter but you're a quilt designer and you have several patterns now right yes i do yeah and that's that's so can what website can people go to find your work your art and your designs um, I, my website is tjwrightquilts.com, yep. and there's quilt patterns there available, art quilt patterns, um, there are art quilts for sale, yeah. Fantastic. And have you thought about, um, I'm not sure if you've, you're already doing it, but these particular kits, are you looking at perhaps maybe down the line people here who think that's a pretty freaking awesome idea for them to be able to purchase these kits? and? Yes. That's, that's Definitely. fantastic. And then I was also thinking, because I live in the wine region of Oregon, Such and a I have area. access to uh, winery space, and so I was actually thinking of doing a sip and stitch <laughs> with it, and, uh, and I have some kind of cool ideas around how we could incorporate kind of like the vino and van gogh i don't know if you've seen those yeah. paint parties that they do that's such but a kind of idea. do the same thing with um uh, the winery and the stitch kits i'm gonna throw this out there quilt retreat this would quilt be retreat. such a fun like yeah. weekend quilt retreat and you just kind of have a nice boozy relaxing time yeah. and get to sew and yeah i definitely would like to um work in an area where I could teach people how I create the foundations for right. these um, because there's so much creativity there as well right along with adding the memories yeah that's really special because I could definitely you as an art quilter this makes me so excited and so happy because I there's there's this uh, to me anyway um, this divide between quilters who don't really see themselves as artists like Oh, I only make, you know, baby blankets, and I only do this, and I only do that. And then artists who think that crafters are, I don't want to say below them, but, you know, they don't really view us in the same way. And then you are kind of, like, melding these two worlds together in such a beautiful and harmonious way. I um, recently heard a term in the art world called art adjacent, is oh. what there is kind of this little... Uh, category that's coming up um, but we all know and we've seen the artists out there it is amazing what people can do with fabric right so um, I, I just say do what you love to do um, and it will find its place yeah. I'm not so worried about what other people are calling it right because if it feels good fills my soul and the people around me that's what it's about. Right. That's you know? very true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely, and I know I kind of get a little hung up on, on the art quilt stuff a little bit, but it's just a, such a shame to me to divide craftsmen from art in general because the things that people create with their heart and soul is just beautiful. Years ago, so I've done a lot of different fiber art. Right. I've done... Um, knitting and spinning and weaving but I took a class years ago from this wonderful woman named Judith McKenzie mm -hmm. people who are in the fiber industry know her her name is synonymous and the class I took she was showing us pieces of fabrics that had been woven you know found in archaeological digs right and she said Whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability because it will be here longer than you are. And so you're leaving a legacy for every stitch that you create with a needle and thread or that you knit into a sweater or that you stitch on your sewing machine, mm -hmm. that legacy is going to be here longer than you. Yeah. So do the best that you can. And they'll wonder who was the person that made this. I mean, right. you're, it's bigger than you when you're creating it. Yeah, that reminds me a lot of the Dear Jane quilt, right? Yeah. Somebody found it in a museum. It was a Civil War quilt. Yeah. And they wrote a whole book. We still, I don't believe, know who the artist or quilter was yeah. of that quilt. We know, you know, bits and pieces that her sons were yeah. off at war, you know, and, and things like that. I but have always wanted to do that quilt, too. I just never have... Uh, like has a gun I'm, I'm gonna do it you know oh, but man. I I do want to do that is uh, definitely a legacy quilt for me I I will put it out there I 
I am a UFO uh, no. expertise. No. Like, who, who is and who isn't a quilter? But I have the Dear Jane EEP that Paper Piece oh. put out a while. And, they're, you know, there's 13 rounds. And I love that because it breaks it down a little yeah. bit for my brain anyway. But, yeah. like... It's a legacy piece. I'm only on row five out of 13, <laughs> yeah. and it's taken me five maybe, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that'll be the inspiration for me to try it. You know, when you're in between projects and you mm-hmm. just need to quiet your brain and, and not be um, physically creating for yourself right. or whatever, that's a great way to just soften a little bit and sit in your place mm-hmm. and just do something. And that brings up a good point, quilting for yourself. How do you balance that? Because I know that the last, um, let's call it, series of quilts that you designed and you worked on were taking panels, and the way you were cutting them and piecing them back up, and you were able to even write patterns for that, which I think is just amazing. I don't think I could ever wrap my brain around that. But you specifically made them for these panels for a particular fabric designer, right? So that's... That's a very different mindset than what you're doing now, which is very much uh, very intuitive and very of your memories and your feelings mm-hmm. and what motivates and inspires you. Right. How, how do you balance that between making something that is for someone specific or, you know, things like that, and then making for yourself? Like, how do you balance that? So I definitely like having a trajectory of where I am going, right. and, and um, I have a plan. This is what we're going to do. Um you know how do we need to MacGyver this what skills do we need to learn in order to digitize it in a way that we can make it into a pattern that someone can understand right because that's a heavy lift for pattern writers um but there are for me the creative space is just coming at it organically right like I have a collection of fabrics or some threads or some materials some embellishments that I want to work with and just organically let it come together. Yes, there are some misses. That happens. <laughs> Creative process, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> but then there are the wins. Yeah. And you, I, all I can say is it's like having, when you have a win, it is like having fairy wings on and that you're just hovering. Like your feet are not touching the ground. It doesn't happen often, but boy, when it does, it is magic and I love that and it generally comes when I just give myself permission to play I have a really basic concept that I'm working with mm-hmm. and I just organically let it flow you get to have those fairy wing moments so. man that I have you ever had one of those <sighs> yeah it's been a very long time for me because like for me, having two kids, and you know, you have kids too, but they're up and gone, or you're on no. Your own. I have three fur babies. Fur babies, yeah. yeah they always need children. love and attention. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's the same kind of idea because when you have a household and things and responsibilities around you, it's very hard to kind of give yourself that permission and be okay with. I'm not gonna do the dishes right now. Uh, we'll order. We'll order something for dinner. I'm not making dinner tonight. I'm I'm in the zone, right? And I do I do do some pre planning so that I do have the um the open space in right. my time time and space to do that. So for years I have done my meal planning on a specific day. So I know that those days are not going to be the days that I'm gonna be heavy in my studio right. or you know if there are chores needing to be done in, in order to create balance in our lives we right. have to do that sadly I wish I had a housekeeper and a cook <laughs> and a, <laughs> Don't a we y- all? yard maintenance person all right like let's just hit the lottery yeah, and yeah, work yeah, the yeah. rest of our lives yeah, yeah, in our yeah. studios that, that's the dream but. but I think it's important for us to take those times in our day to let our mind rest yeah. for those creative juices to continue to flow because if we're just constantly in this creative mode which there's a season for that yeah um, but there's also a season to just rest rest your mind yeah prior to coming here I've been working so hard um, moving towards this H and H event yeah. that um, actually the last week prior to flying out yesterday 
I really didn't do a whole lot. I actually binge watched some um, uh, pattern design or uh, like Project Runway type yeah. of show. Yeah, okay. Just because I wanted to see other people creating and and be in that space, but I myself didn't want to be responsible for that creativity. Yeah. So it was a really great way for me to settle down until I came here. Well, and I think that's a really good point because, you know, for a lot of us, quilting starts as our passion, our hobby, our thing to escape to. And when, you know, we move from that into a business, small business atmosphere where we're producing art or we're producing uh, bags for shows or patterns mm -hmm. or what have you, that kind of gets taken away from us a little bit, right? right. So it's, it's so important. I think that's a really good point of finding something else that also kind of gets you in that zone but lets you also zone out and relax and kind right. of for breathe sure. in, right? Right, yeah. for sure, for sure. Well, that's, that's about what time we have for this first segment. Yeah. TJ, thank you so much thank for you. coming out here. I, it's meant so much to me having you come out here, being here on the show, and just getting to meet you in person. Because, like, TJ and I have been friends for, for almost two years now, is it? Or just a year? A year. Time has no meaning I know, anymore. I know, I know. <laughs> So it's just, it's really nice to be able to see you and talk to you and like be able to share your creativity and your work with the world. Tell people where they can find you on Instagram, uh, if there's anywhere special they can find you besides today here at H&H, &H, right? So you can find me at tjwrightquilts.com and then on socials, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. Mm -hmm. I haven't dived into the YouTube yet, but you know, I might be poking you. Yeah, I know. I have a feeling you're going to be poking me, yeah. and that would be TJ Wright Quilts as well. Yeah. And um, thank you for all of the people who are following me. It is inspiring to have people who comment and, um, you know, give you the thumbs up. The people that are rooting for you that you are going in the right direction is, yeah. is so helpful in any creator's life, for sure. Yeah, so that's very special. Thank you for letting me come today. I'm so, I just was so thrilled to be here, and yeah. I, I think we're gonna have to take our quarters and go get some coffee absolutely. here in a minute for sure. Absolutely. Thank you everybody for coming over and being a part of the show and watching, and we have people passing by. It's it's kind of exciting. I've never done a live show in front of people walking by. It's a new experience. Yeah. But this is our first live stream at H and H. We'll be back later today with Susan Bunts. Mm -hmm. I, I am so terrible. You guys know I'm terrible with names. So, um, but she'll be here and she's going to be talking about her clothing and her bags and what oh a my creative gosh, talent. Amazing. Another one of our friends that just like raises the tide for everybody to sail. So keep an eye out and I'll see you soon, Quilty Crew. Bye. Bye.